blessed is he who Father, the Pantocrator, O oh, Holy Trinity, have mercy on us, O oh, God, Lord of hosts, be with us, for we have no helper in our hardships and tribulations but you, O oh, Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. In Christ Jesus our Lord. I have sinned, forgive me. Let us pray. Stand up for prayer. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, for he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to himself, spared us, supported us, and has brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him, the Lord our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything concerning everything and in everything for you have covered us helped us guarded us accepted us to yourself spared us supported us and have brought us to this hour. pray that 
God may have mercy and compassion on us. Hear us, help us, and accept the supplications and prayers of his saints for that which is good in our behalf at all times. And to keep the life and standing of our honored father, the archpriest Pope Abba Tawadros II, and his partner in the liturgy, our father, the bishop Abba Yusuf, and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Therefore, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all peace with your fear, all envy, all temptation all the work of Satan the counsel of wicked men and the rising up of enemies hidden and manifest take them away from us and from all your people and from this church and from this your holy place but those things which are good and profitable do provide for us, for it is you who have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. Lord have mercy, we worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the holy and co-essential Trinity. Hail to the church, the house of the angels. Hail to the Virgin who gave birth to our Savior. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness, O Lord. The rivers, the springs, the plants, uh, and the fruits are to you. Mary, the fair dove, who has borne to us God the long host. Hail to you, O Mary, with a holy hail. Hail to you, O Mary, the mother of the Holy One. Hail to the church. Cherubim, hail to the seraphim, hail to all the heavenly orders. Hail to John, the great forerunner. Hail to the priest, the kinsman of Emmanuel. Hail to my lords and fathers, the Apostles, hail to the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hail to our Father Paul, the teacher of the world. Hail to the chosen vessel of our Savior. Hail, hail to you, O martyr. Hail to the event. Angelus, hail to the Apostle St. Mark, the Beholder of God. We ask you, O Son of God, to keep the life of our pain. Pope Abba to address the Archpriest, confirm him on his throne. And his partner in the liturgy, our holy and righteous Father. Abba Yusuf, the Bishop, confirm him on his throne. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever in one hypostasis. We worship him and glorify him. O King of Peace, grant us your peace, establish for us your peace, and forgive us our sins. Disperse the 
enemies of the uh, church and fortify her that she may not be shaken forever. God is now in our our midst with the glory of his Father and the Holy Spirit. May he bless our soul and purify our hearts and heal the sicknesses of our souls and bodies. We, we worship you, o Christ, with your good Father and the Holy Spirit, for you have risen and saved us. Have mercy on us. Let us pray. Stand up for prayer. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Again, let us ask God the Panto Krator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, the souls of your servants who have fallen asleep, our fathers and our brethren. Pray for our father and our brethren who have fallen asleep and reposed in the faith of Christ since the beginning. Our holy fathers, the archbishops, our fathers, the bishops, our fathers, the hegomans, our fathers, the priests, our brethren the deacons our fathers the monks and our fathers the laymen and for the full repose of christians that christ our god may repose all their souls in the paradise of joy and we too accord mercy unto us and forgive us our sins lord have mercy Graciously, O Lord, repose all their souls in the bosom of our holy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Sustain them in a green pasture beside still waters in the paradise of joy. The plates out of which grief, sorrow, and groaning have fled away in the light of your saints. Raise up their bodies also the day which have appointed according to your true promises, which are without lie. Grant them the good things of your promises, that which an eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither come upon the heart of man. The things which you, O God, have prepared for those who love your holy name. For there is no death for your servants but a departure even if any negligence or heedlessness has overtaken them as men since they were clothed in the flesh and dwelt in this world O god as the good one and lover of mankind graciously accord O lord to repose and forgive them your servants the orthodox christians who are in the whole world from the east to the west and from the north to the south each one according to his name and each one according to her name for no one is pure and without blemish even though his life on earth be a single day as for those O lord of souls who have taken repose them and may they be worthy of the kingdom of the heavens as for us all grant us our christian perfection that we pleasing to you and give them and us a share and an inheritance with all your Lord, have mercy. graciously accord O lord to keep us this night without sin Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and exceedingly blessed and glorified be your name forever. Amen. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us according to our hope in you. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Hear us, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the regions of the earth. And you, O Lord, keep us safe from this generation and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Lord, make me to understand your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord, enlighten me with your righteousness. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Despise not, O Lord, the works of your hands. You have been my refuge from generation to generation. I asked the Lord and said, Have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, I have fled unto you. Save me and teach me to do your will, for you are my God, and with you is the fountain of life. In your light shall we see light. Let your mercies come unto those who know you. To you belongs blessing, to you belongs praise, to you belongs glory. O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, existing from the beginning, now and forever and ever. Amen. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto your name, O Most High, to show forth your mercy every morning and your righteousness every night. Holy God, God holy, holy mighty, mighty, holy immortal, was born of the Virgin, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, was crucified for us, have mercy upon us. 
Holy God, mighty, holy, immortal, who rose from the dead and ascended into the heavens of mercy upon us. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and on to the ages of the ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, forgive us our sins. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. O Lord, visit the sake of your people. Heal for the sake of your holy name. Our fathers and brethren who have fallen asleep. O Lord, oppose your soul. We are without sin, Lord, have mercy on us. We are without sin, Lord, help us and receive our supplications. Yours is the glory, dominion, and triple holiness. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, bless amen. O Lord, make words to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine the kingdom, power, the glory forever, amen. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Hail to you, we ask you, a saint full of glory, the ever virgin, not the utter curse, the mother of Christ. Lift up our prayers unto your beloved Son, that he may forgive us our sins. Hail to the Holy Virgin, who has brought forth unto us the true light, Christ our God. Ask the Lord on our behalf that we have mercy on our souls and forgive us our sins. O Virgin Mary, the Holy Theotokos, the faithful advocate for all mankind. Intercede on our behalf before Christ, whom you bore, that he may forgive us our sins. Hail to you. And the true queen, hail to the proud of our who bore to us Emmanuel. We ask you to remember us, O our faithful advocate, before our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. Sing to the Lord a new song, O people who love Christ our God, for he visited us with his salvation as a good one and lover of mankind. We ascribe praise unto you with voices of glorification, <coughs> O our good Savior. Confirm us unto the end. Grant us, O Lord, your peace, and save us from the hands of our enemies. Humiliate their counsel, and heal our sicknesses. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness, O Lord. The rivers and the springs, the plants and the fruits. Bless us in our world. Work with your heavenly blessings and send unto us from on high your grace and your goodness. The afflicted save them, the travelers return them, the bound loosen them, and those who have slept repose them. Lift away your wrath from us and deliver us from inflation and from the snares of of demons, O giver of good things. We praise and glorify him and exalt him above all as the good one and lover of men. Have, have mercy on us according to your great mercy. The adornment of Mary in the highest heaven at the right hand of her beloved entreating him on our behalf. As David has said in the the book of Psalms, the queen stood at your right hand, O king. Solomon has called her in the song of songs, my sister and my spouse, my true city, Jerusalem. For he has given a symbol of her in many high names, saying, Come out of your garden, O choicest aroma. Hail to you, O virgin, the right and true queen. 
queen, hail to the pride of our race, who bore to us Emmanuel. We ask you to remember us, O our faithful advocate, before our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. Seven archangels praising as they stand before the Pontocrector, serving the hidden mystery. Michael is the first, Gabriel is the second, Raphael is the third, a symbol of the Trinity. Surya, Sadakaya, Surataya, Nananaya, the great and holy luminaries, treating him for the creation. The cherubim and the seraphim, the thrones, dominions, and powers, the four incorporeal creatures, carrying the throne of God, the twenty-four priests in the church, church of the firstborn, firstborn praising him without without ceasing, proclaiming and saying, Holy God, heal the sick, holy, mighty, O Lord, repose those who are asleep. Holy, immortal, bless your inheritance. May your mercy and peace be a fortress to your people. Holy, 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 O Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. And when they say Alleluia, the heavenly response saying, Holy, Amen, Alleluia. Glory be to our God. Intercede on our behalf, O angelic armies and heavenly orders, that he may forgive us our sins. Among those born of women, no one is like you. You are great among all the saints, O John the Baptist. You are much more than a prophet, exalted in righteousness. You are the partner of the bridegroom, the Lamb of God. You have borne witness to the truth. True light who came into the world, those who believed in his name became children of the light. Intercede on our behalf, O forerunner and baptizer, John the Baptist, that he may forgive us our sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ has chosen his apostles, Peter and Andrew, John and James, and the rest, Philip and Matthew, Bartholomew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Canaanite, Thaddeus and Matthias, Paul, Mark and Luke, and the rest of the disciples who followed our Savior. Matthias, who was chosen in place of Judas, all of them and the rest followed the Master. Their voices went forth throughout the face of the whole earth, and their words have reached the ends of the world. Pray to the Lord. On our behalf, O my lords and fathers, the apostles, and the seventy-two disciples, that he may forgive us our sins. O blessed Saint, the teacher of the world, our teacher, Saint Paul the wise, the tongue of fragrance. You were persecuting the church, trying to destroy her, but it had pleased God to reveal his Son in you. That you may be a chosen vessel of our Lord Jesus Christ to bear his name before all the Gentiles. On the road you saw the Lord, and he talked with you, and he worked by your hands unusual miracles. You labored abundantly more than all the apostles, and you bore in your body the marks of the Lord Jesus. You were entrusted with the gospel. You wrote the epistles, and you heard in the paradise inexpressible words. Who can describe your virtues, your faith, your humbleness, your zeal, your virginity, and your love for Jesus Christ. With a great struggle, you invited everyone to be filled to the measure of the fullness of Christ in love. Finally, you gave up your life and shed your holy blood as a token of love to your Savior and gave him what is yours as he, he followed, followed your example. God, the author of life, so make us also worthy to be lying, came indeed in faith. Hail to our Father Paul, the teacher of the world. Hail to the chosen vessel, 
of our Savior. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, O the Saint, our teacher, Paul, Paul the Apostle, that he may forgive us our sins. O Mark the Apostle and the Evangelist, the witness of the passion of the only begotten God, you have come and enlightened us through your gospel and taught us the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You brought us out of darkness into the true light, feeding us the bread of life that came down from heaven. All the tribes of the earth were blessed through you, and your words have reached the ends of the world. Hail to you, O martyr, hail to the evangelist, hail to the apostle, Mark the beholder of God. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, O beholder of God, the evangelist, Mark the apostle, that he may forgive us our sins. Watch, O you received the grace of Moses, the priesthood of Melchizedek. You received honor from our father, Pete, the first of the apostles. Christ lifted his right hand on your head. He gave you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That you may govern over the church and that you may shepherd your people in purity and righteousness. As Paul the apostle has said, likewise as in Christ is also. Likewise we magnify you with David the psalmist. You are the priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Pray to the Lord on our behalf our father the patriarch our holy father of Atawad Rose that he may forgive us our sins. Pray to the Lord on our behalf our holy righteous father Abba Yusuf the bishop that he may forgive us our sins. Watch over us from on high where you dwell, O Lady of us all, the ever virgin Theotokos. Ask of him whom you have borne, our good Savior, to take away our troubles and grant us his peace. Hail to you, O Virgin, the right and true Queen. Hail to the pride of our race who bore to us Emmanuel. We ask you to remember us, O our faithful advocate before our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. We exalt you, the mother of the true light. We glorify you, Saint Theotokos, for you have brought forth unto us the Savior of the whole world. He came and saved our souls. Glory be to you, our Master, our King, Christ, the pride of the apostles, the crown of the martyrs, the joy of the righteous, the firmness of the churches, the forgiveness of sins. We proclaim the Holy Trinity and one Godhead. We worship him. We glorify him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. We, we believe, believe in, in one God, God, God the Father, the Pantocrator, creator of heaven and earth and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of an essence of the Father, by, by whom, whom all things are made, made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary and became man, and he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead, according to the scriptures, he ascended into the heavens, he sits at the right hand of his Father, and he's coming again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and Son's worship and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we confess from baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Ah, 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 amen.
ಕೋರಸಿ ಪೂನ compassion upon us Jesus Christ our God has said to us saying the honored disciples and holy apostles many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them and to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them but as for you blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear may we be worthy to hear and act according to your holy gospel through the prayers of you saints pray for the holy gospel lord have mercy remember also our master all those who have bidden us to remember them on our supplications and prayers which we offer up unto you O lord our god those who have already fallen asleep repose them those who are sick heal them fill the life of us all the salvation of us all the hope of us all the healing of us all and the resurrection of us all the song of david Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. and have mercy on me lord be my helper alleluia let them exalt him in the church of his people and praise him in the seat of the elders for he has made the family like a flock of sheep the upright shall see and rest 
rejoice. The Lord has torn and will have no regret. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand, our saintly father, the patriarch, Pobavata Wadrosda Second, and our father, the Bishop of Yosef. May the Lord keep your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness, O Lord. The rivers, the springs, the plants, and the fruits, Alleluia, Alleluia. Stand in the fear of God, let us hear the holy gospel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord of hosts. Bless, O Lord, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you. God, Savior and King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom is glory forever. Amen. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But what shall I like in this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces, and calling to their companions and saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourned to you, and you did not lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking. And they say, He has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, Look, a gluttonous man, an iron bibber a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is justified by her children. Glory be to God for Bless the crown of the year with your goodness, O Lord. This is he to whom is due glory with his good Father and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Blessed be the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The perfect trinity, we worship him and glorify him. Schlier. Stand up for prayer. Peace be with you. And with your spirit.
Again, let us ask God the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask and entreat your goodness all over of mankind. Remember, O Lord, the peace of your one only holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Pray for the peace of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Orthodox Church of God. Lord have This which exists from one end of the world to the other, remember, O Lord, our honored patriarch and father, the archpriest Pope Abba Tawadros II, and his spiritual brethren, the patriarch of Antioch, Mark Natius of Rome II, and the patriarch of Eritrea, Bun Antonius, and his partner in the apostolic liturgy, our father, the bishop Abba Yusuf. Pray for archpriest Pope Abba Tawadros II. Pope and Patriarch and Archbishop of the great city of Alexandria and his spiritual brethren in the Apostolic Liturgy, the Patriarch of Antioch, Mark National Friend II, and the Patriarch of Eritrea, Buena Antonios, and his partner in the Apostolic Liturgy, our Father the Bishop, Baba Yusuf, and for Orthodox Bishop. Lord, how Keep them secure for us for many years in peaceful times. Remember, O Lord, the salvation of this your holy place in every place in every monastery of our Orthodox Fathers. Pray for the salvation of the world and of the city of ours and of all cities, districts, islands, and monasteries. Lord, have And every city and every country and the villages and all their adornment and save us all from famine, plague, earthquake, drowning, fire, captivity, bar barbarians, the sword of the stranger and the rising up of heretics. Lord have mercy. Graciously accord, O Lord, the waters of the river this year to bless the Pray for the rising of the waters of the rivers this year that Christ our God may bless them and raise them according to their measure that he may give joy to the face of the earth. Sustain us, the sons of men. Save the cattle and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Raise them to their measure according to your grace. Give joy to the face of the earth. May its furrows be abundantly watered and its roots be plentiful. Prepare it for sowing and harvesting. Manage our life as deemed fit. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness. For the sake of the poor of your people, the widow, the orphan, the traveler, and the stranger. And for the sake of all of us who entreat you and seek your holy name. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you. For you give them their food in due season. Deal with us according to your goodness. So you give food to all flesh. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness. The we to having sufficiency and everything always may abound and every good deed. Lord have mercy. Again, let us ask God the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, our assemblies Pray for this holy church and for our assembly. Lord, have mercy. Grant that they may be to us without obstacle or hindrance, that we may hold them according to your holy and blessed will. Houses of prayer, houses of purity, houses of blessing. Grant them to us, O Lord, and to your servants who will come after us forever. The worship of idols, utterly uproot from the world, Satan and all his evil powers, trample and humiliate them under our feet speedily. The offenses and their instigators abolish. Let the dissensions of corrupt heresies cease. The enemies of your holy church, O Lord, 
as at all times and also humiliate strip their vanity, show them their weaknesses speedily, bring to not their envies, their intrigue, their madness, their wickedness, and their slanders which they commit against us. O Lord, bring them all to no avail. Disperse their counsel, O God, who disperses the counsel of Ahithophel. Lord, have mercy. Arise, O Lord God, let all your enemies be scattered, and let all who hate your holy name flee before your face. But let your people be in blessing, thousand of thousand, and ten thousand times ten thousand. Doing you well, our Father, Father. Father. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. In Christ Jesus our Lord, bow your heads to the Lord, before you, O Lord, let us attend in the fear of God, peace be with all, and with your spirit, O Master Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, and Logos of God the Father, who broke our bonds through his saving and life-giving suffering, who breathed in the face of his holy disciples, and saintly apostles, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. You also now, our Master, through your holy apostles, have given grace to those for a time labor in the priesthood in your holy church to forgive sins upon the earth and to bind and to lose want of iniquities. We ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, for your servant, those who bow their heads before your holy glory. Dispense unto us your mercy, lose if want of our iniquities, if we have committed any sin against you, knowing or unknown, strange heart, or indeed or in word, or from faint heartedness, O Master, who knows the weakness of men as a good one, a lover of mankind, O God, grant us the forgiveness of our sins. Bless us, absolve us, and all your people, fill us with your fear, strengthen us and rule good will, for you are our God, and glory, honor, dominion, and worship are to you, to you together with good Father, Holy Spirit, now and forever, and the age of ages. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We will continue our Bible study in the book of Psalms, Psalm 19, starting from verse 8. This psalm, actually, we pray it in the first hour of the Agbaya, from verse 1 to verse 6, he spoke about how the heaven declare the glory of God how God is revealed to us in the nature in the creature from verse 7 
to verse 11, he is speaking to us about how God is declared also or is revealed through his word, through his word. In verse 7, he said, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the uh, making the wise making wise the simple making wise the simple so tonight actually we'll study from verse um, 8 verse 8 the statute of the Lord the statutes of the Lord are right Rejoicing the heart. As I said, Saint, uh, Saint David, Prophet David, he gives a title and then description and then action to the word of God. So in verse 7, the title, the law of the Lord. The description, perfect. The action, converting the soul. Then he gave another title, the testimony of the Lord. The description, sure. The action, making wise the simple. In verse 8, the statutes of the Lord, that's the title, are right, that's the description, the action, rejoicing the, uh, the heart. God's word and the commandment contained within God's word are right. Why they are right? Because it is the revelation of a God who is holy, true, and always right. God is revealed in his word. So whatever he says, since he is holy and true, whatever he said, it is right. So when he says the statutes of the Lord are right, he means equal, just, proper. They are not merely appointed or forced on us by authority. But the statutes of the Lord in themselves are equitable and just. And when we know the word of God, and through them we know the God of the word, the God who gave us this word, the person rejoice because they are equitable and just. Let me give you an example. If you go to somebody asking for advice, for a counsel, and he give you advice that you believe it is right, you will be happy. For example, if you are purchasing a house and you have so many options in front of you and you don't know what's right so you ask a person whom you trust and then he give you a right advice you will be happy you will rejoice in the same way the word of God rejoices the heart we find joy and actual pleasure in the truth of God and in the relationship with God that's revealed in his word. His commandments are not felt as stern, but as gracious counsels of what God desires man to do for his own good. God gave us these commandments for our good, to protect us, and actually to live a happy life and a prosperous life. Then in the second part of verse 8, he said, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the soul. So the title here, the commandment, the description, pure, and the action, enlightening the eyes. Because the word of God comes from a God who is himself pure and holy. 
That's why his word also is pure. There is no contamination or impurity in the word of God. Actually, the word of God is pure and also makes those who receive the word of God and accept the word of God pure. And the word of God enlightening the eyes definitely does not mean here the physical eyes but the eyes of the soul, the mind. So our mind, our understanding, our heart are enlightened by the truth of God. So enlightening the inner eye of the person, enlightening the insight of the person, it gives us discernment. It teaches us what's right from what is wrong. Verse 9, he said, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The fear of the Lord actually is another title. But title by the action. Because when we read the word of God and we understand his majesty, the word of God actually installs in us this awe, reverence, fear toward God. So, and this fear is clean. The description is clean. And it is enduring forever. Enduring forever. The word Met F Savis in, uh, in Greek can be translated religion or godliness. Because the true religion is to walk in the fear of God. And the fear of God is the godliness. Godliness means you are aware of the presence of God inside you and around you. So you walk in the fear of God. That's godliness. So the fear of the Lord here describing describing the, the godliness. And when we read the word of God and the word of God reigns in our heart and practiced in, in our life makes us clean makes us clean from any sin. When we walk in the fear of God, we will be clean from any sin. You cannot walk in the fear of God and disappoint God. So, uh, that's why he said, the fear of God is clean. It cleans our way, as we read in Psalm 119, verse 9. And the fear of the Lord enduring forever means this reverence of God is constant, unchangeable, can never be abolished. Here David, as I told you, called the word of God the fear of the Lord. St. Clement of Alexandria said this fear keeps us from committing sin. That's why the fear of the Lord is clean, because it keeps us from committing sin. Also, our relationship with God, there is a reverence and there is a love. The reverence keeping us from committing any sin, but the, moti the love motivates us to practice what is right, righteousness, to practice it spontaneously as children who love their holy and righteous father. So, what David is saying here, the fear of the Lord is clean, endures forever, he meant, the one who reads and hears and studies the word of God, and meets the Lord in his word, 
will have an appropriate appreciation of God's awe and majesty. So he will respect him, fear him, reverence him. And because of this fear, he will be clean because, as Saint Clement of Alexandria said, he will actually, it, it prevent me from committing any sin. And this fear make me endure forever. Then in the second part of verse 9, he said, The judgments of the Lord are true unrighteous altogether. Uh, verse 9 is summary of this chain of six jewels. When he said uh, from verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the, the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, unrighteous altogether. So, uh, he summarized these six descriptions. Uh, by saying righteous all together. They are without exception just and right, pure. Uh, the word of God frequently called judgment because they are declarations of his righteous will. What God judges as right. That's why the word of God is called judgment. Because it tells us what God judges as right. Also, his judicial, uh, judicial sentence by which he expected that men should govern themselves. So, by the word of God, we should govern ourselves. We should judge ourselves. That's why they are called judgment. And also the third reason because God will judge us according to his word in the last day. So it's called judgment because the word of God judges what's right, by which we can judge ourselves and govern ourselves, and by which God will judge us in the last day. And he said righteous altogether, they are without exception just and true. So he, he sent as the prophet David said, there is nothing false or unrighteous in his word. Verse 10, more to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. David in verse 9 spoke about the fear of the Lord. So lest the word fear here is misunderstood. And um, someone might think that the word of God provokes fear, terror in the soul that destroys any joy or any commitment that makes the soul lose the feeling of human freedom. Because fear usually comes with slavery. But here the word fear is not the terror of the slaves. It is the reverence. But lest anyone misunderstood the word uh, fear, that's why David pointed out the believer's eagerness toward the word of God. He said the true believer appreciates the word of God and treasure the commandment of God and desire them more than gold, more to be desired than gold. David was a king, so he was a wealthy man. But rarely David was known for his riches. David was much more known for his great heart toward God. 
So the word of God is far greater than gold for a man. Far more to be desired than any amount of riches. But David felt that it is not enough to use the word gold. That's why he elaborated more by saying, yea, than much fine gold. So the gold that's totally pure, the word of God is more desired than the very, very fine and pure gold. David also said the word of God is not only to be held in greater honor and value than gold and material wealth, but also greater than the experiences of the senses. Honey is sweet and pleasant to eat, but God's word is sweeter than honey, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. And honey is sweet, but honey just comes out of the comb, has a sweetness, richness, and flavor far beyond what honey has. So the word of God is much de more desired than the fine gold and sweeter than the honeycomb. Verse 11, Moreover by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them, there is great reward. So, the word of God also, there is warning in the word of God to us. The word of God warns us regarding our responsibility. And also the, the word of God warns us regard the dangers that we should avoid. So, the word of God gives an instruction that wealth like gold and fine gold or pleasures like honey and honeycomb cannot give. That's why David said more desirable than the fine gold and sweeter than honeycomb. The word of God warns the wicked not to go on in his wicked way and warns the righteous not to turn from his good way. Then David said, in keeping them, there is great reward. Either as a result of keeping them, or in the act of keeping them. Because the act of keeping them will make you happy, will make you pure, will make you free, Besides the reward that you will get because you kept the commandment of God. So here, the obedience to the word of God becomes its own reward. When we live the way God wants us to live and designed us to live, there is reward in it. We will be wise, we will be holy, we will be happy. And actually, the Christian in all these years from the time of the law in the Old Testament until now experience and confirm this truth that in keeping them there is a great reward. In keeping the word of God there is great reward. Then in verse 12, David spoke, Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. So David spoke in verse 11 about warning found in the word of God and the great reward in obeying and keeping the word of God. When David spoke about the warning, this made him reflect on times and ways in which he ignored the word of God, ignored the warning, and did not keep the word of God. 
Actually, when we remember the word of God and his judgment, this actually will raise in our mind thoughts of transgression. All of us, all of us, in certain moments in our life, we transgressed the word of God. As we read in verse Romans 7, verse 7, man had not known sin but by the law. The law is like a mirror that shows me my weakness. Sometimes I commit sin without knowing it is sin, but when I read the word of God, I understand it is sin. That's why no one can contemplate the law without being reminded of possible disobedience to it. I'm sure all of us, when we read the scripture, we find immediately how many times we disobeyed the word of God. So when David starts to speak about a warning in the word of God, he converted this into a prayer, asking God to protect him and to cleanse him from secret faults. Who can understand his errors? Who is aware of his errors? Many times we commit sins while we are unaware, knowingly or unknowingly, willingly or unwillingly. So David is praying, cleanse me from secret faults. And that's beautiful when you read the scripture, how to convert the scripture into a prayer and ask God if the scripture actually pierced your heart and reminded you with your weakness or your sins, then actually take this as moment for prayer, as David did, cleanse me from my secret faults. St. Augustine is commenting on who can understand his errors. So St. Augustine said, by what sort of sweetness can there be in sins? So, is there any pleasure in sin? Is there any sweetness in sin? Where there is no understanding because who can understand his own errors? Who can understand the misery that errors bring on us? Because sins close our eyes to which truth is pleasant. Close our eyes that the judgment of God are desirable and sweet. As darkness closes the eyes, so sins close the eyes of the mind and suffer it not to see either the light or itself. So, St. Augustine said, Satan deceives us by making us believe that there is pleasure in sin. But in reality, the sin makes us blind walking in darkness and we don't see the sweetness and the riches richness in the word of God. So David is praying for divine grace to cleanse him from secret faults and also when it comes to his willful, intentional, deliberate sins. Not only from the unknowing sin or sins committed unknowingly or unwillingly, but those who are committed knowingly and willingly, as we read in verse 13. He said, keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them, the presumptuous sins, let them not have dominion over me then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Uh, in some translations, presumptuous sins are translated as a representation of people. For example, in the Septuagint translation, uh, it says, Keep back your servant also from strangers. So those who are strangers to God, 
those who are stranger to godliness not strangers in in uh, nationality or no strangers to god and to godliness as if david saying keep me from all conversation with the strangers in things that are sinful and from the sins of others lest i participate in the sins of others protect me from having fellowship with them and being a partaker of them lest their punishment should come upon me too another translation like the targum interpreted from proud men and the arabic translation is taken from the targum in arabic it says ايضا من المتكبرين احفظ عبدك متكبرين proud men who are boastful and proud themselves lest the person should be so corrupted and drawn aside by the proud men but according to the English translation presumptuous sins David is saying protect me from the sins that I committed willfully in rebellion and intentionally committed them and the petition is that these sins may be committed by good men if we are left to ourselves and the grace of God is taken away from us so even good people if the grace of God is taken away from us we will commit sins willingly and intentionally and also we will rush into them because we are not protected by the grace of God that's why David is is asking God to restrain him and protect him by his grace and this actually teaches us a very important lesson that even the saints cannot keep themselves God only can keep us from evil if you want to fight any sin if you want to overcome any sin by your effort we will fail but we need to ask the grace of God it's only through the grace of God that we can overcome these sins and not allow these sins to have dominion over us as he said let them not have dominion over me so David is praying that at any time he is tempted by such sin let them not prevail over him control him so as if David saying if I fall into any sin O oh God, deliver me speedily. Let me rise again quickly. And in order not willingly give myself to these sins, and these sins become habits, bad habits in my life, as if they are a normal practice, I do it every day. So, this actually a beautiful prayer keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins let them not have dominion over me I know many sins can turn into habits in our life and have dominion over us David said if you protect me then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression so his prayer was rightly placed his love for the word of God and his dependence upon God in prayer would help him to stay free from the dominion of enslaving sins and thus he will be blameless before God so David knew that when sin in his life either the secret faults that's the inward or the presumptuous enslaving sin that's the external when God protect him and the word of God cleanse him then 
he could be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Some father questioned what David meant by innocent of great transgression. What is the great transgression? Augustine said it is the sin of pride and others thought it is the sin of apostasy, falling away from faith. It is easy to repent from any sin, any sin, other than the sin of pride. In the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, adulterers, tax collectors, uh, thieves, many people repented. Only the religious leaders of Israel could not repent because the sin of pride. And apostasy means denying their faith. Other said the great transgression is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which is rejecting repentance and rejecting believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the sense here is he should be cleared and freed from the multitude of transgressions that he had been guilty of, whether secret faults or presumptuous sins. So he's asking God to preserve him from much sin, which otherwise he should have fallen into. Verse 14, the last verse. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. So David actually closes this psalm with a humble surrender of his mouth and heart to God. After he prayed that God may keep him from sinful action, now he prays that God would govern and sanctify his words and his emotions and his thoughts. He knew that real godliness is not only what you do, but also the thoughts in your hearts. Like the, when the Lord said, if you look at a woman to lust after her, you committed adultery in your heart. So the real godliness is not only to control your actions, but to control your hearts and to control your mind. That's why he said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation or the thoughts of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Then he called God my strength and my redeemer. His strength and his redemption. David knew that he needed a redeemer. Redeemer means you know when, like, if a person was taken in captivity, so you go and you pay something in order to redeem him. David spoke in a prophetic way about Christ, the Redeemer. He paid his life. He shed his blood in order to redeem us. And he called him, Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. So this expression refers to the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom alone this word belongs. Because the Lord, through his blood that he shed on the, on the cross, actually he pardoned our sins and he gave us the grace of the Holy Spirit that strengthened us in our journey on earth. That's why no prayer can be acceptable before God, which is not offered up in the strength and redemption of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our prayers will be accepted when offered in the name of Jesus, means by his strength and in his redemption through him, who 
who took our nature upon him. Jesus, God the Son, became man and he took our nature in order to be God-man. So we abide in him and in him we are acceptable before God the Father. And thus he can redeem us toward God the Father. This actually concludes Psalm 19 from the book of Psalms. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. And to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and on to the ages of the ages. Amen. We proclaim and say, O our Lord Jesus Bless the crown of the year with your goodness, O Lord. The rivers, the springs, the plants, and the fruits. Save us and have mercy on us. You have received the grace of Mo, the priesthood of Melchizedek, the old age of Jacob, the long life of Methuselah, the excellent understanding of David, the wisdom of Solomon, and the spirit, the paraclete, who came upon the apostles. May the Lord preserve the life and of our honored father, the archpriest, Pope Abba Tawa, and our father, the bishop, Abba Yusuf. May the God of heaven confirm them on their thrones for many years and peaceful times. May he subdue all of their enemies under their feet. Speed. Pray to Christ on our behalf that he may forgive us our sins in peace according to his grace. Mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us, amen, bless me, bless me, Lord, the repentance, forgive me, say the blessing. Christ our God. Amen, so be it. O King of peace, grant us your peace, establish for us your peace, forgive us our sins. For yours is the power, glory, blessing, and majesty forever. Amen. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son.